So we carry on with our explanation for chapter four, five, railway infrastructure systems, and we have reached section four. We will be talking about railway switches and crossings. This uh, incredible asset that is very much important for increasing capacity and moving trains from one side to another. But also we'll be talking about stations in this uh, lesson. And uh, they, are two different, they, are, they are two different sections, but we'll be combining them in one session. So without further ado, let's start with switches and crossings. So in this section, we'll be having an introduction to switches and crossings. We'll talk about switch components. We'll talk about switches types or switch types. We'll talk about switches construction or switch, cons uh, switch construction. Also talk about issues on switches and crossings. Some of the things that affects maintenance, inspections and others. So, Switches represent around 20% of fixed assets of the permanent way, and this can be in value or it can be actual physical assets. And sometimes I think the figure is between 10 to 20%, but what we want to say, it's a very important asset in the infrastructure. Switches and crossings is very important, very valuable asset. And they are subjected to higher stresses than the trap itself because they are running on a curve and they, they have sharp edges. So the wear on switches can be much higher than the wear on the track. And there are several types of switches. There is a single switch, there is a double switch, there is symmetrical turnout, there is double slip and there is single slip. And the difference between a double switch and double slip, it's double slip, you would have that half a circle while the diamond or the double switch would have a diamond shape. And every switch have those elements, the bleed, the stock rail, the switch diamond, wing rails, the check rail, switch lock and hydraulic switch machine. And the bleed, the stock rail, are the one that is responsible for directing the train. The switch diamond is the one that is responsible for separating between uh, two sides. The wing rail and check rail are for additional support on the switch and switch lock and point machines help in moving the, uh, the stock rail from one side to another. So here we go, this is the, uh, the switch. The switch uh, illustration. This is the stock rail. This is the switch rail, and this is one route, and this is another. And this is, uh, and here should be a point machines like this one, which moves the stock rail from one side to another. So here the switch will go in this side, but here the switch will go in this side. So it depends in on where is the switch gap. Uh, this is the guard rail, and this is a wing rail, which act as an additional support for for the switch. The frog or the diamond is the angle in the middle. And in high speeds, you would have what is called the swing nose diamond, which can uh, support high stresses. Um, this is basically the components. And we, let us have a look at the types. You need to remember these components, the point machine, the switch, uh, the switch rod or the lock stretcher bar, the uh, stock rail, the switch rail, the, gu the guard rail, the wing rail. Among others, this is very important for you to remember. So here are some of the most common switches types. You would have a cylinder turnout, you'd have a symmetrical turnout, you have a, you'd have a double slip, you'd have a single slip, and you would have a diamond crossing. So with that, let's have a look at the, so this is, this is what we call a, a, a double slip. And this would be a, a single slip. And this would be a, a diamond crossing. Um, uh, yes, so, so sometimes you would mis be mistaken between diamond crossing and double slip. So a diamond, uh, a double slip have this uh, half a circle in it, which is th this part. So you'd have that movement, the train can come and move from this side to that side and here, the train either move uh, here, either the train move directly or that move from to the other side. So this is a double slip and this is a diamond crossing. You would be, if you become an, a switches expert, you should be very familiar with all the times. Now, how do we construct switches? So switches are constructed in their manufacturing plants. They are laid out, they are numbered and they are assembled and they are tested. Then they are the, uh, the then we assemble them and we uh, put them on trucks 
uh, or the special trains and we take them to site. We install them, then we bring the camping machine and we tap the ballast underneath them. Then we bring the, singling, uh, the signaling components and the equipments and we install them after that. So with that, you would have a ready switch. Manufacturing, site, camping and signaling components. And for example, Vosteldin is one of the most famous manufacturers and they have a manufacturing plant in Turkey, I think in Chankari. There are other manufacturers in other parts. So what about issues of switches and crossings? So maintenance of switches include the following activities. So inspections, uh, inspection of sleepers or bearers. And uh, we, with that, this is, a, this is a bearer, which is a longer sleeper. Sometimes it's subjected to higher stresses. So we inspect the bearers, uh, which is a longer sleeper. Also, we uh, check uh, ultrasonic switch tests, lock stretcher bar inspection, and we do sometimes nose inspection. We make sure there, there is no wear on that. The uh, lock stretcher bar is sound and we check the bolts. Some inspection, when some inspection can be done on spot and some reverse, while others needs to, you, you need to plan them, like bringing a blast regulator. So you might do some welding, you might do some surface uh, treatment of the rail. Uh, so this is can be, and sometimes you need to replace parts of the switch. But in general, this is what the ac activities you would do. So this is all about switches and crossings. Now we move to railway stations. And in this section, we'll be talking about what examples of railway stations, what are the station's main components and what is passenger flow, how do we model stations, and what are the station's interfaces. So stations are symbolic landmark that people can refer to. In many cases, for example, you would have that this is a St. Pancras station in London. This is, it connects Paris to London. This is also St. Pancras station from the outside. This is Haiderbash station in Istanbul. And this is another station. And I'm not sure that of the country, but it's one of the most iconic. And this is Union Station in Washington, DC. And this is the headquarter of Amtrak. So railway stations being components, you would have an entrance. And this entrance, you need to go through a place where you have to go through a ticket barrier or a some waiting area, then you would be moving to the platforms. And similar to airports, you would have a, a, a passenger flow that is one way flow. So the, arrive, the departures will be coming from one side and the arrivals will be leaving from, from the other. And this is one way direction flow is an important part of station's design. You don't want people to be uh, the arrivals to mix with the people who are leaving because this will lead to congestion and will not make a smooth passenger flow. And we will model for passenger flow. But also we'd have in every station a concourse area, a waiting area, a place where people can wait for their trains and see wh when is the next train coming and uh, get some information and maybe buy tickets. And you would have a platforms area where people can access the trains. Also you'd have retail areas. And here you can see a Burger King, a place where you can uh, eat a meal or go to the toilet or uh, do something that, uh, or buy uh, a magazine and so on. So there is a retail area sometimes, it depends on the station. And there is control rooms and uh, control rooms and systems and uh, a room to control the rooms and systems inside the station. And usually this is for uh, dispatching trains or, or it can be part of a signal box or uh, changing the passenger information system within the, within the stations, among others or can be the uh, uh, a ticket office. Also, you have access to trains. And by access to trains, we mean you need to have some escalators, some stairs, some uh, elevators. And those also fundamental parts of train of, uh, of uh, train stations. Uh, so this is, this is our, the main components of our railway station. And you need to, when you think about railway station, you be thinking about passenger information systems, platforms, uh, stairs, escalators, elevators, those concourse area and maybe uh, uh, passenger flow in one direction. Those are one of the key features and characteristics of railway stations. But railway stations are also structures like any other building. You need to make sure to model them uh, you know, 
from an architecture point of view and from a structural point of view and to make sure that they are structurally sound. And you can see this is structural design, but also you would do modeling for passenger flow simulation and you would try to model uh, uh, people movement within the station and make sure that your interior design and uh, your interior layout is uh, proper for the station layout. Also, you would sometimes we do train capacity assessment, how many trains we can run in this train. Can we run a train every five minutes or every 10 minutes and so on. So this is about what we do in terms of modeling for uh, railway stations. And sometimes we one of the areas of focus is this interface, uh, the train uh, uh, platform interface. And this is a very dangerous interface. So the train platform interface is responsible for 30 fatalities each year. Uh, and 48 of the total passenger fatality risk. So that, that's an important uh, uh, platform. So this is a safety hazard. So we need to design for stepping distance between a platform and a train. This is one of the key criteria that we'll be looking at, the stepping distance. This is an important element. Uh, and also we need to think about safe dispatching of trains. And this is, you can see a dispatcher that is looking at the platform and making sure, sure no passengers and maybe giving the signal to the driver to start the journey. So this was a quick uh, introduction on railway stations as well as switches and crossings. Uh, I hope you, you enjoyed it. The next section will talk about railway alignment design and uh, we'll see you in the next uh, lesson. Have a great evening and see you later.